It's a balmy 20 degrees. The sun is out and it's awesome. We got a little snow last night, so trails are not very good till they get packed down. So I'm out on the bike path, getting a nice cruiser in. Yeah, it's gorgeous. All right, so you guys know how important I, I believe foot strength is. Training the feet to create longevity, health, performance, all that jazz we talked about last week in the foot core video. Today, we're gonna take that one step further and talk about how important foot strength is for your shoe selection and how we want to gravitate to the most natural type of shoe possible. The stronger your feet get, the more they want to work naturally and use our feet as a stabilizer for really efficient, strong running. So where do we start with a natural running shoe? What's most important? Our shoes and our shoe choice dictate how well we use our feet. And we want to use our feet well. I know this is an old Vibram that I use for um, on, on the raft going down the river, but it's a good example of how, again, we gotta go back. Last week I did a video on foot strength. And you guys know how important I believe in the foot strength and developing our feet to help us stabilize us as runners. And that's the holy grail for run health is being able to stabilize at the feet. So if we're training our feet, my whole philosophy is based on the purpose of the day, we want to try to go into the most minimal type of shoe that will get the job done that day. Okay. And with that, so I'm going to use the example of the most minimal type of shoe, maybe the Viva five fingers or our feet. Okay, very flexible. All there is is just a little protection. Um, but this, this is kind of the, the, the starting point of what's very, very natural. Again, the Vibram five fingers or our feet. Again, they're very natural. Okay, so again, based on the purpose of our workout, of the run that day, I'm looking to achieve my shoe choice is to be the most minimal, most natural type of shoe that's gonna allow my feet to work as naturally as possible. And that's again where the foot strength comes in. If we're training our feet, okay, they're getting strong, we're training our muscles, our legs, all the way up through the hips and glutes, okay? That's what we want to develop with our strength. And that's gonna help us to eventually get into a more minimal shoe that is gonna allow our feet to work naturally. Okay, so that's the key in trying to pick out a shoe and to develop foot strength to allow your foot to act naturally as possible. Okay, the more built up shoe we have, the more our foot is not able to articulate and stabilize in a natural environment. Okay, but based on a distance, based on the terrain, based on our foot strength, we're going to need to make a tool decision based on the purpose of the day. So another shoe, this is actually a road shoe, Ultra Road Shoe Escalante. Again, super flexible, okay? Not a lot of stability built into the shoe. This is really, it's got a nice, good, what I would call a natural medium stack height. And stack height meaning just the, the thickness between the midsole, outsole, and the upper. Okay, you can see it's a pretty, pretty minimal stack height, but gives you some cushion. Okay, but again, just showing you a road shoe that's a super, super flexible, that's going to be a really, really natural ride. Okay, showing this so as we move into the trails, you can start to get some correlation there, okay? All right. The Ultra 
superior. Okay, this is the trail shoe. And again, we're just looking at giving you some talking points to think about as you start to select shoes for your own purpose. Okay, again, this is super flexible. You can see there's not a lot of support built into the, the midsole or, or the outsole. Okay, so again, super, super natural ride. Okay, it's going to allow the foot to articulate, okay, and work and again stabilize. Remember at last week in the video we talked about how we want our big toe to stabilize our, our foot so that stabilizes the knee and fires all our muscles in an appropriate way and where the foot strength comes in, the training of the foot comes in. But having a nice flexible shoe that's very natural is going to allow our foot to work as naturally as possible. And that's what we want to strive for. So when we're taking into account natural running shoes for trail running, for mountain running, we have to consider a few things. What affects natural shoe movement, flexibility, stack height, weight, the shape of the shoe, how much outsole versus midsole, how much rigidity, is it stiff, is it soft? A lot goes into the properties of having a natural running shoe. And why is it important to have a natural running shoe? Because again, the principles apply just the same as having good foot strike and good foot strength. We want to use our feet very, very well. And the more the natural shoe, the better our feet will work. The better we'll use our muscles, the stronger we'll be, the more equilibrium we'll have in our muscle usage, the less tight we'll become. So foot strength really helps you to be able to get into a natural running environment with your shoes. When we're dealing with trail shoes, many times the biggest decision is adequate protection for your shoes from the rock, the terrain, the alpine environment, the mountains. So protection is a huge component to making a proper shoe selection with a natural environment. But where it gets tricky is our natural running shoe selection might change depending on the, the type of run we're doing, the distance, the intensity, the terrain, all that play into our choice. So what's proper for one type of run might not be proper for another type of run. And that's what we're gonna dive into. Ultra superior, super flexy. The problem with a shoe like this for me, this might be great for a shorter run that's very, very clean terrain, no rocks, because there's not a lot of protection. You can see the midsole exposure here. We've got the outsole and then midsole. All this gray is midsole exposure. And what that does is it creates lightness for the shoe because they're taking away rubber, but there's not a ton of protection here for big days in the mountain or very, very technical terrain, okay? so. Um, that's the downside of something very natural, very light like this, is that now we start to lose a little bit of protection. All right. So on the flip side, I'm going to go to a La Sportiva. This is the Captiva, a great built shoe. Okay. Up to this point, we've also just solely stuck with a zero drop shoe. Zero drop meaning the heel stack height and the four foot stack height is the same, okay? So again, up to this point, the Ultras and the, the, the Vibram five fingers were zero drop. This La Sportiva, okay, is a six mil drop, okay? So six, six mil differential from heel to toe, okay? And now we lose a little bit of flexibility, <clears throat> okay? So it's a little bit more rigid, Okay, we have good traction. We have some, some exposed midsole, but it's not as wide as the other shoe. So this is gonna give me a little bit more protection because of its rigidity and a little bit more outsole rubber. Okay, so this is similar stack heights to, 
to here, other than the, the, the drop. Okay, so two very similar shoes from a four foot stack height, but now we have a little bit more stiffness that's gonna give me a little bit more stability on very, very rocky, very technical terrain. So where this might not feel as natural on a very clean trail, it's gonna feel very, very agile on very, very undulating, off camber, rocky, very, very talus type of mountain terrain. Okay, so this is a shoe that I would pick for maybe a moderately long run that's relatively fast where I want agility and lots of stability because of the rock. Okay, it's still flexible enough. I'm still using my, my feet really well because it, it does have flexibility. It's not a super high stack height. And that, it's another thing that goes into giving you the agility. Having a lower stack height, you're gonna have more agility on the rock. So going to a shoe like this on very, very rocky terrain when I wanna run really, really fast and be stable and, and have very, very confident ability to run on rocky terrain, I'm gonna pick a shoe like this, okay? And it's still very, very light, relatively speaking. There's a lot of marketing messages out there how important a wide toe box is to let your toes splay. That's certainly important, but what nobody talks about is how important the shape of the outsole, midsole, last of the shoe at the arch. So let's go to keeping it kind of shorter and faster. This is the Dina Fit Feline Up Pro, and I've reviewed this. This is one of my favorite shoes of the year. And this is a four mil drop, okay? And it's, you can see the stack height. Again, the stack height is relatively low. It's gonna give me a lot of agility. This is very flexible, has good grip. So this is a wonderful, wonderful shoe when, it's, again, it's nice and technical. I want a lot of agility and I want a lot of that protection, okay? And what's key about this shoe is what you start to start to look for is you can see how, I'll go back a little bit, how in through the mid point of the foot, it gets very narrow and then it widens out versus a shoe like this that's very, very thick or wide in through the arch. See that difference there? Okay. That's going to be the difference between something very agile that you're going to be run really fast and technical terrain or fast in general versus something that maybe is a little bit more clunky and more for a longer run. Okay. Another one similar, Solomon S Lab Sense 7. I have the eight as well. You guys know how much I love Solomon the fit. Okay, this again is gonna be something that's gonna be very, very, very flexible. That's gonna give me the ability to use my feet really, really well and really, really strong. Um, what's unique about this shoe, it has very, very good protection relative to its minimal type of um, stack height. Okay, this is a four mil drop, but it's, it's a really, this is a very, very minimal shoe, okay? But again, what's unique about this shoe is that even though it's minimal, it allows my feet to work really, really naturally with a great fit. It gives me tons and tons of protection on all types of terrain. Okay, it won't be great on mud, but um, that's not its purpose, okay? So again, now you can see how we've got a little bit of a narrow shape through the arch, which again gives you a really agile, stable, natural, using your foot naturally feel, okay? So start to look, start to look for that if you're needing a very agile, fast shoe. And when it comes to zero drop and stack height, I think there's a misconception out there that if you have a zero drop shoe, that's natural. And that's not always the case. So this is the, 
the Lone Peak, the Ultra Lone Peak were very, very popular ultra running shoe. Okay, zero drop, but now we've got a little bit thicker stack height, okay, which when we add the stack height and we get taller in the midsole and outsole, we start to lose a little bit of flexibility. It's not bad, okay, and that's what makes this a good shoe is that even though now it's got a little bit more stack height or what people would say a little bit more comfortable um, as far as the ride, um, it's still rather flexible because there's no, no built-in stabilization within the midsole. Okay, and you can see all that nice and flexible. So a little bit longer of a shoe, something that you would run long in. Um, but again, now as we start to widen here, we lose a little agility. Okay. So why it might be more suited for a longer shoe, longer distance shoe, because naturally if we're running a little bit long, we're not quite running as fast. So maybe we don't need the agility of say a faster shoe and a faster run. Okay, and that's where we start to look at the differences in how we pick our shoes, okay? Since we now we lose a little bit of agility, we also lose a little bit of a natural feel. Okay, more stack height, okay, and a little bit wider in the arch, our feet are not able to feel the ground and articulate and stabilize as naturally as, say, a shoe similar to what we've talked about. Something like the Ultra, again, here's two Ultras, and this is, this is how they segment it within their line. The Superior light fast very very flexible very very natural a short distance shoe the next one in line with their their line is the lone peak again just that next level as far as stack height that again you just lose a little bit of a natural feel but it's going to be maybe suited for a longer distance type of run especially if you don't have the foot strength and again, that's where the foot strength comes, starts to come in, is that as we develop more foot strength, when you might be able to first start running in this, with foot strength, you might be eventually able to transition to more of a natural lower drop shoe, or, I'm sorry, a lower stack height shoe for your longer runs. And that's what I think is key, is where the strength of the feet come in, is it allows us to down, go down into more of a natural shoe. Maybe at first, hey, you can run, you know, three, four hours in this, and then your feet start to fatigue. Train the feet, and now slowly you're able to run longer and longer, maybe up to the same distance as this because of your foot strength. And so that's where the foot strength comes in to help you be able to get into the most natural type of shoe for you, okay? And it's an ongoing process. Like I mentioned, you start here, go down to here, okay? All right, so now we've got the Innovate Terra Ultra 270. And this is their newest shoe for this year. And again, I did a review on this, check that out. Um, my shoe of the year and one that I actually started to use on the road even, okay? And so now let's dive into how this is different from what we've talked about already and why I consider it my shoe of the year. First of all, it's a zero drop, okay? But we have kind of what I would consider a middle of the road stack height. This, and this is an ultra shoe for Innovate. Okay, they position this as an ultra distance shoe. But very, very flexible, okay? We've got exposed, midsole to make it light. See all that exposed midsole? Okay, the black is the outsole, but with a little bit more stack height than say the superior, we can expose the midsole and have it light, but have the protection we need that maybe is missing in this type of shoe. And that's the key of this shoe is that it's agile, it's flexible, it allows the foot to work naturally, 
but it has a ton of protection with just a little bit more stack height for long, long runs or short and fast. Okay, and we've got, I would say, if we compare the, the width in the arch, it's a little bit narrower in through the arch than, than the Lone Peak. So you can start to see that's gonna, these two shoes are maybe pretty similar, but this shoe is more natural and more agile because of the cut in through the arch. You can see it's just a little bit narrower and the Lone Peak's a little wider. And that's gonna give me more agility in a good way, in a natural way. Okay, and that's why I love this shoe and maybe a great all-rounder for those who can't buy several tools in their tool shed. Ask yourself, can you feel your feet work? Can you feel your big toe stabilize and engage the arch while you're running? Can you use your feet in your shoe while you're running for stabilization? If not, maybe it's too rigid or maybe the stock height's too high. I just got this shoe. This is the DinaFit Ultra 100. And so it's their largest stack height and it's the largest stack height I've ever had. And you can see it's, it's really positioned as more of a, a really high end maximum cushion shoe. This is a six mil drop and with the huge stack height, okay, now it's really not stiff at all. I'm trying to do what I was doing with the other shoes. Very, very stiff, okay? So you can hardly see, I'm really trying to bend there. So super, super stiff, okay? So the point being is that now on the opposite end, once we go to something like this that's very stiff or very such a great stack height, even though the, the drop is maybe okay with the six mil drop, it's, it's you know kind of not super high or super low for an ultra or long distance shoe, we're losing a lot of natural feel with our feet. And therefore, when you start to strengthen your feet and the feet want to work naturally and move naturally, if you have strong feet going into a very stiff shoe like this, it's just going to be super, super uncomfortable. Okay, Your foot's not going to be able to work naturally like it wants to do because of your, your foot strength. Okay, So this, this, something like this shoe will probably be really super, super uncomfortable. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that end, um, you know, and again, if, if we have, I don't have any of the really pillowy hokas, um, but if we, again, use this foam pad as an example, if I'm running on a really, really high stack height, even with a low drop, okay, and that, that's a lot of cushion there, similar to this pad, okay, my foot's, my foot's not going to be able to stabilize. Or my foot wants to be on a hard surface. So, and that's where being low to the ground is going to allow my foot to stabilize in a good way. Okay, it wants to be on a hard surface. We want to use that, that forefoot and the big toe for stabilizer to fire our arch, to fire our calf, to stabilize. And you hear me say this all the time. But how we use our feet, good or bad, dictates how well we use our muscles all the way up through our legs, okay? And if we're in a really, really high shoe with a lot of cushion, our feet aren't able to stabilize. And therefore, so much goes awry all the way up through the leg. It might be super comfortable, but you're not using your feet very well, okay? Really, really rigid, really, really hard, no flexibility whatsoever. Six mil drop. So now let's go to the Merrill. This is the Merrill Mountain Long Sky. Very, very under the radar shoe for them this year. This is an eight mil drop, okay? A lot of people might be scared from eight mil, okay? But it's a good stack height. It's not very, very high in the forefoot. We get a little bit of a heel, okay? 
But what's key about a shoe like this, and where I want you to start to look again, is how they're manipulating the midsole exposure with the outsole black. Again, that gray is exposed midsole to take a little weight off like the other shoes we've talked about. But what's unique about this is now it's flexible or a little bit more flexible relative to the beefier shoe that it is. So relatively speaking, this is a very flexible shoe because of how they cut this out. If this was all rubber outsole, this would be very stiff. Okay, so even though this is an eight mil drop, this could be a good option for a very, very long distance shoe that's somewhat natural. And again, as we go longer and longer, depending on the type of cushion or protection we need based on the terrain and the distance, you know, we might need to go up to a shoe like this for long, 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 super long runs. And I'll leave you with this message. Something that the running stores won't tell you. So if you're buying your shoes from a brick and mortar store, they have to sell through the majority of their shoes to meet their profit margin for the year. That's why they have to upsell all these different kinds of shoes, stability, cushion, motion control, all of these go into what they have to sell through. They can't just have one philosophy or they wouldn't meet their revenue projections for the year. So if you're looking to get into a more healthy environment with your shoes and gravitate to more of a natural running environment, within your shoe selection. Train your feet first. Get the feet bomber strong because <clears throat> that's gonna allow you to get into any type of natural shoe that you need to based on the purpose of the day. As your feet get stronger, the more uncomfortable your unnatural shoes, your built up shoes will be because your feet will wanna act natural and the shoes are not allowing that to happen and there's where the discomfort comes in. So let that be your cue as to how strong your feet are getting. All right, I hope that's super helpful. Throw down your questions as always, and pass on the message as always. Be that courier. See ya.